estimated freely, this is one way to take a look at that. We want to see that they're equal to zero as a mean, and we want to uh, see that there are no particularly large values and that there's a normal distribution associated with them. So I'm going to create, again, a new data file to input those values into. So I want to copy and paste those. These are all the non-salient loadings. Now I should probably define what a non-salient loading is. And in the context of a PCFA, a non-salient loading is any loading that is not the primary loading. So vocabulary items or subscales should load on one uh, scale, or one factor rather, and all these other secondary loadings are all non-salient loadings. So in the context of a PCFA, arguably there should only be one loading associated with one observed variable. So I've, I'm looking at all the secondary or non-salient loadings associated with this factor solution and I want to create a histogram out of it. So now I'm going to grab these non-salient loadings Put that in there. Oops. Grab these non salient loadings. There. Oops. And these are also non salient loadings. So they're all the loadings that don't cons correspond to that particular factor. This factor here, the third one's arithmetic. So the intersection and vocabulary loadings are non-salient. I'm going to put those in there. So now I want to, again, I want to see a normal distribution centering around a mean of zero, and I don't want to see any particularly large values. So descriptive statistics, oops, frequencies. I'm going to put vo that variable in there, charts. I want to see a histogram. Click on continue and click on, oh, I don't want the frequency tables, so click on OK. And here is uh, my distribution, and we can see that the mean is equal to zero. Let me just make that a bit bigger. So we have a mean of zero. There are uh, 30 non-salient loadings. And there are no particularly large values. I probably want to check the scale. doesn't look great, but you won't expect anything great with a, um, let's see if I put it at 0.2. Whoops. Oh. That's too much. It doesn't really, uh, you're not really seeing what I'm doing here. I'm actually changing the scale, uh, which doesn't, s let's see if I can, I might have to change the bins, which is kind of arbitrary with SPSS. I won't bother, to be honest. <laughs> well, this is, you know, it's normal-ish. I could improve it if I put a bit of time into it and adjusted the bin rate in SPSS, but it's normal-ish. We have a, uh, uh, it's normal-ish, and there are no particularly large outlying values, so nothing in the uh, negative 0 0.20 or plus 0 0.20. So these are factor loadings, just as a reminder. And these are the non-salient factor loadings, and they're all hovering around zero. And this is what we want to see if we want to support the partial confirmatory factor analysis uh, model, which in this case we've extracted three factors. So based on the fit indices, uh, which the incremental fit indices are all above 0 0.5, 0 0.95, and the absolute fit index, which is less than 0 0.8, and SRMR was estimated at about 0 0.02, which is less than 0 0.06, uh, 
I would conclude that my partial confirmatory factor analysis supported a three-factor model, an oblique three-factor model. And now, if I collected a new data set, and I wanted to retest this model in a confirmatory factor analysis, I actually have a chance of supporting an oblique three-factor model solution, uh, three-factor model. Had I not obtained good fit values and non-salient loadings in a histogram that were non that were not particularly large, hovering around a mean of zero, uh, had I not observed that, there's no point in collecting new data and trying to get uh, a good confirmatory factor analytic model fit associated with a three-factor model solution. So you might as well just do this partial confirmatory factor analysis uh, before you even decide to do the CFA with a new data set. And you're supposed to collect a new data set after you do an exploratory factor analysis. So that's the end of the demonstration of a partial confirmatory factor analysis. I hope you decide to use it.